It's Miss Eve Eve. We've got a cat with us today. I don't know how long she'll stay, but she's obviously interested in the Christmas stories. I'm starting at chapter 24 today on page 249. Flight at the museum. Bam! A bullet suddenly whizzed past millimetres from William and the Christmas Saurus. It smashed the streetlight behind them, sending shards of glass showering down onto the street below. That was a warning shot, screeched a villainous voice from somewhere at the far end of the street. Now wheel yourself away from that dinosaur, you little lump of pointlessness, unless you want to join him on my wall. I'm sure I can make room for a little head like yours. William had no idea what to do. His heart was doing all sorts of heart wheels. His brain was racing at a million miles an hour. The vision he'd had earlier of the best Christmas ever definitely didn't involve a maniac with a gun. He thought fast, then pushed Stuffy back into the wrapping paper, shoving it under the seat of his wheelchair, looped the fairy lights around the dinosaur's head and screamed, run. The cat has now decided to just go behind me and start attacking the Christmas tree decorations. Sorry. The Christmas Saurus burst into action instantly. He may have been pulling a boy in a wheelchair and a stuffed dinosaur, but he was still fast. Stop, 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 cried the hunter as he saw his prize racing away. Gunshots suddenly cut through the air. Bang, bang, slicing snowflakes clean in half. But they missed the Christmas Saurus and William. They were too fast. Growler, fetch, the hunter commanded and his trusty companion zoomed down the street after them. Faster, Christmas Saurus, faster, William cried, holding on for dear life, ducking and dodging the hunter's shots, crouched low in his chair. William couldn't see where the Christmas Saurus was going. He could only feel him twisting and turning as he dashed between parked cars and whizzed along the street at the side of the museum. The street at the side of the museum. William suddenly had an awful realisation. It's a dead end, he screamed as the Christmas Saurus dug his claws into the snow and skidded to a halt, stopping just before they slammed into a brick wall. They were trapped. They waited, trembling at the end of the long, straight, dead end street. The large museum towered over them on one side and a row of locked offices loomed on the other. The only way out was the way they had entered and Growler was just prowling round the corner baring his sharp, hungry teeth, cutting off their only chance of escape. A few moments later, the hunter caught up. He appeared in the distance with his rifle raised and aimed it at the Christmas Saurus and William. Good dog, Growler, he said, and he dropped him a scrap of raw meat from his pocket as a reward. Game over, little boy. You're trapped. Ha! You'd have to fly to get out of this one. William suddenly caught the Christmas Saurus's eye and saw that there was a twinkle in it that he hadn't seen before, as if he had changed somehow. The Christmas Saurus looked back at William, and William knew exactly what he was thinking. That's it, he whispered. You have to fly. William heard his father's voice in his head. Believing is seeing, Mr Trundle had explained. He looked the Christmas Saurus square in the eyes. I know you can do it, he said. I never would have believed that a dinosaur existed, but here you are. I never would have believed that a real dinosaur but would be my friend, but here you are. There are so many things that I never would have believed before tonight. So many seemingly impossible things that might just actually be possible. You just need to believe. Well, guess what, Christmas Saurus? I believe that you can fly, said William, completely honestly. I believe in you. As those words left his lips, something incredible happened. All the fairy lights that were wrapped around the Christmas Saurus and William's wheelchair lit up. They glowed brighter and stronger than William had ever seen. The Christmas Saurus felt it too. Something had just changed in him, and he stood wrapped in the glow of a hundred twinkly lights. He knew he could do it. He didn't just want to fly. He believed he could fly. The Christmas Saurus suddenly burst into the fastest run he'd ever managed before pulling William behind him with the gleaming rings of dazzling fairy lights and heading straight for the hunter. What the devil, spat the hunter? Stop this instant! But they didn't stop. They kept going faster and faster. I'm going to count to three and then it's over for you and your dinosaur boy, 
the hunter called out. But the Christmas Saurus didn't slow down. One, he shouted. The Christmas Saurus gained speed. You can do it, William cried. Two, the hunter screamed, tightening his grip on his rifle. The Christmas Saurus took longest strides, getting a little higher with each step. Three, yelled the hunter, and he closed one eye and aimed down the sight of his rifle, just in time to see the Christmas Saurus take one final, giant, almighty leap into the air. He was flying. The Christmas Saurus was flying. The hunter and his dog were standing directly underneath the flight path of the flying dinosaur as he pulled William's chair into the air behind him. They dived for cover, William's wheels skimming the top of the peacock feather in the hunter's hat, the hunter dropping his rifle in shock. <laughs> flying dinosaur! Saw, the hunter stuttered in amazement as he watched the Christmas Saurus and William soar higher into the air, whizzing along the street. A flying dinosaur! I must have its head! He howled like a madman into the sky. William grabbed hold of the luminous reins and started and steered the flying Christmas Saurus up and round the grand exterior of the museum. From the air, the building looked even more amazing. In fact, everything suddenly looked more amazing. The snowy streets of Williamstown, the clock tower in the distance, the white rooftops. It all looked magical all of a sudden. But then William realised the most magical sight of all was directly in front of him, pulling his wheelchair like a sleigh across the Christmas sky. A flying dinosaur.